All right, guys, so I just had a viewer in the chat ask me, who should I put on my wish list? I have no idea, and I am happy to help. So um, I'm going to go row by row and go over the characters you want to put in your wish list in the start. Now, my wish list looks very different because I have most of my characters max copies. So uh, for, re for that reason, I'm just swapping them out. That way I can get the rest of the copies for characters I don't have. So um, I would say that in the beginning, you want to go something like this. Tamisia and Rowan, they are definitely the two characters that I see the most when it comes to any form of content. Uh, including Arena, which is the PvP mode. Um, the reason is bec because Rowan, he's one of the three premium healers who, in his case, what he does is he provides emergency heals by popping a potion on an ally when they dip below 50% HP. He also is an energy battery, providing energy when he ults to uh, to your to some of your party members to help them get their ult faster. And what ends up happening is that, you know, if you say partner Rowan up with a primary healer like Haywin or Smokey, he is able to uh, provide the energy needed to get Haywin to ult sooner, to get her prayer rain out faster, to apply the burst heal, the CC immunity, and the 32% um, the damage reduction as an example. But the energy regen also, or the energy uh, that he provides for everyone also uh, gets the your damage healers ultimates off or get your tanks ultimate off to help his or her survivability so ruin even though his heals might not be the greatest but he's more like an emergency burst healer when you dip into the red and he provides energy now tamisia uh, this lady right here she's uh, also a very good light bearer character who i actually play a lot Especially if you are Vala mains, you want a Tamisia because you want a character who is not only a tank, very mobile to attract tons of enemies and break enemy formations, but also she has the ability to knock back and stun the enemies as well as when you get her to Supreme Plus, she also does physical defense shred, which helps Vala out because she's physical. Uh, typically, Vala teams, you either splash Vala on a team, uh, like a, a Wilder team or some other team, or you have a light bearer core of Tamisia, Rowan, and Vala, who is on the limited banner. And then, of course, if you have Mary Lee, who is an excellent DPS in the uh, Dream Realm because of her ability to hop around as well as her high damage output, you know, you have a very nice light bearer core right there. Now, noteworthy mentions is that Cassidy, this lady right here, once you max, once you get enough copies, say like Mythic Plus of Rowan, Mythic Plus of um, Tamisia, and you want to have another character to bring to Mythic Plus, you can swap one of them with Cassidy. I play Cassidy from time to time because for the Aeron teams, basically the Wilder who vortexes everyone at the start of the match to group them together and does a 40 percent magic defense shred with his cleave um aaron likes character magic users such as carolina arden and cassidy so if for, s for some reason you want to spice things up and you want to run like a wilder light bearer team and you want to run aaron you could literally do aaron Arden and Cassidy as your DPS core, and then maybe have Granny as a tank and Haywin as your healer for the four, the four faction um, Wilder bonus. So, anyways, that's an ex another excellent S rank character. Now, kind of going over the A rank characters for Light Bearer. If I was to start the game over, I would probably put Merrily and Lucius here first. The reason being that as I progress through content, I find myself getting stuck on stages where the enemy is doing overwhelming damage. And for this reason, having someone like Lucius, who is able to provide really beefy shields, not just for himself, but also his party members, is incredibly useful. 
so lucius you know being such a valuable tank like sometimes even though my lucius as you can see is very low ranking not even mythic plus but sometimes i bring him into the battle when i'm just monka s i i don't have any other option so lucius just being a fantastic tank and probably the best tank on the light bearer side besides Tamisia. uh you pulled both units yeah so i think I think that will be very good and merely you know I'm kind of kicking kicking myself for not getting her earlier because she's really good in the dream realm especially um, the stage where the enemy spits out a swamp onto the three grouped the the largest crowd basically and your merely can hop out of that swamp because the swamp you know deals damage and also applies permanent debuffs that impact your damage output and i think also impact maybe your survivability so and then after that then you probably want to max corin uh corin uh, i'll probably film a guide on him later but uh there, he is very good in say like the dream realm where you want to like if i was to kind of show let me find the part where, yeah, so he jumps next to the weakest ally, granting them a shield, um, knocking the back one tile. I mean, he's not like an insane game-breaking unit, but he's not a bad unit either. Like, I have him max, but I'm going to be honest, I, I do have better alternatives. Than Corrin, so but Corrin for like a free to play or a low spender probably would have more value. Okay, so now on to the Mauler class. So for the Mauler, hands down, you do want Smokey in there. Smokey is most definitely the premium S rank Mauler that everyone should have on their wish list. Like, there's no good reason not to. A good DPS and good to clear out other physical attackers. Okay, okay, yeah, so that's. So Taurus is saying Corrin is good for that. Oh, good. Merely is good for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then so after Smokey, I would say probably... Um, so a lot of content creators say Shakir. I ended up uh, also having Brutus at one point. Uh, yeah, but a lot of people were talking about Lumont and his tankiness. And after reading his skill, I realized that, oh, if I want, like, a tank that is a chonky tank, then Lumont might be the one. So for now, I, th I would recommend either uh, Smokey and Shakir or Smokey and Brutus, and then uh, work your way to Lumont after that. Now, Maulers have a lot of really good A rank characters that are almost, a like, even better than S ranks. Uh, the two being... Uh, Coco, who is on the bottom right here, she's really amazing because she heals, and when her ult, when she ults, she applies a 45% damage reduction for 12 seconds to your party, which is nuts. This is what allows you to push high scores in, say, like the Lone Wolf, or say, like the Dream Realm, where you push so high that the enemies can one-shot you and so by having Coco cast her ult beforehand you survive the attack heal back up and it's you just keep rolling with the with the damage so Coco is invaluable uh, for end game content for every single account you have to get her maxed OD same thing if you want to push that score he is the highest damage dealing unit in in the game uh, I can't think of anyone who does more damage than him, besides maybe Cessia. Uh, so I think Odie is definitely a character you have to bring to Supreme Plus as soon as possible. What is really nice about him is that a lot of his damage comes from his normal attacks, which is great against, especially good against bosses who silence your team because we do have one Dream Realm boss who silences your team, making it so that your healer doesn't heal, but also making it so your your um, your damage dealers don't get to deploy the majority of their kit. And so their damage significantly drops. But because Odie's poison stacks come from his normal attacks, which I think is from this clause, 
Oh yeah, so this is considered normal, and then, yeah, normal attacks to the nearest poison target. Yeah, and then normal attacks hit a poison enemy, the base damage of the dart poison is permanently increased by 25% up to 20 stacks. And those stacks do not disappear. They stay on the boss until the end. So imagine having 20 stacks of poison continuously ticking as Odie's continuing to fire away. Uh, it, it makes for really really high scores if you run od so yeah those two for sure should be in the so it would look kind of like this it would look like this and then afterwards then you have a couple of choices you've got kruger as an example uh, you have uh entendre you have seth um yeah, and Satrana, someone asked me about her. I haven't looked into her that much because I'm still trying to max out my other characters. But I do think it would look something like this for the second row. Now for the Wilder, for me, it's really obvious. Hands down, the meta right now is Aeron. Uh, if you go into Arena or if you go to AFK stages, if you watch me clear to like like right now I'm 1025 for the AFK stage um, the reason I've been able to push that high is because even though the enemies are double my strength being able to group everyone with Aeron and do with his cleave a 40% magic defense shred and when you get him supreme plus you get an additional 15% magic defense shred you're allowed to let characters like Arden, mages like Arden, mages like Carolina, mages like Cassidy, Parisa, etc. do insane amounts of, of magic damage to everyone because he groups them. So Aaron is the goat. You cannot pull him with the um, arena coins so you should put him on the wish list and I think there is merit to also putting Haywin on the wish list because um, Haywin is the best healer if you are looking for survivability, which would apply to everyone at some point. There is no one who would not benefit from Haywin. When she ults, she is CC immune for six seconds, which is great against certain bosses that like to silence you. Not only that, she also do, does a 32% damage reduction, applies it to your entire party. For how many seconds? For nine seconds yeah it's really quite amazing yeah but you need to get her mythic plus for that which is why you need to put her on the wish list get to mythic plus as soon as possible it'll make your life a lot easier now once you get those two then you can go ahead and swap with granny once you hit afk 700 your afk stage 700 you are going to unlock three three afk stages as opposed to one and you're going to unlock the double feature i pulled her at the beginning yes um granny is actually quite good synthol synthol is the one who's uh is asking me how to uh you know curate the wish list so i uh, don't know if she is guaranteed okay gotcha yeah granny is really good because when invested she's able to she has a lot of her kit that enables her to um, heal herself, to buff her defenses, to also trap enemies within two tiles in front of her. Uh, she's very good. The problem is she has to be invested. Otherwise, when you're pushing endgame content, she may have a hard time surviving. Yeah. So, uh, but this is how I would do it. And then for the A ranks, Okay, so if I was to do A rings, I would probably go. I would probably go like this. Yeah. And the reason for this is because, well, first of all, Arden is one of the core pieces of an Aeron team. Now, when you reach very high stages of PvP arena, you will find variations of Arden, or I'm sorry, of Aeron. Sometimes it's Aeron, Haywin, Arden, Carolina, with a tank like Granny or Thorin, like like my team. Or you may run into like, say, instead of Arden, or instead of Carolina, no, instead of Arden, you go 
um, Rainier. Yeah, but Arden, what makes him so good is that he his crowd control gets insane when he hits Mythic Plus because when you start off with him he entangles two enemies which basically traps them and uh, makes it so they can't move and they take damage however if you have a mythic plus all of a sudden all five enemies are stuck on their tiles with the entangled roots also taking damage so him along with carolina who plops the giant ice cube in the middle and does splash damage to everyone the combination of arden carolina as well as Aaron, it makes it so that it's very difficult for the enemies to escape once they're clustered together. Yeah, Damien and not Parisia. Honestly, I would take per Paris Parisa. Yeah, I, so um, I think that Zero makes a very good point. Um, yeah, you know, Damien's pretty tricky to use. The nice thing about Parisa, actually, if you're really heavily going for an Aaron team, is that Parisa does is also a very good mage to use for an Aeron team. Now, honestly, earlier I, I take Parisha. Yeah, I think for Parisha, yeah, increases her attack speed, does AoE damage, marks them with a floral target. Yeah, she's like, he, like super hyper focused on damage. She restores her energy, it looks like, um, increases her attack. When you get her mythic plus, marks the nearest enemy, just symmetrical position with the flower. And the flower, what it does, let me see here, dealing 480% damage to all floral marked targets and other enemies within one tile. Ooh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Reduces normal attacks to trigger flower power. Reduced by one. So she's like all in on the damage, guys. She got, She has the attack speed. She has the attack. She's got the flower marking to when she hits the flower marked enemies. They do a splash. It does splashes over to more damage to other enemies. Yeah. Good point, Chad. Good point. She is far more useful in earlier stages. Agreed, agreed. So this is why we have chat here, guys. Because no matter... Like every content creator, they have their own experience. And I think it's very important, you know, that we get like all the suggestions. So I do agree. And I do see Parisa's functionality in a pure Wilder uh, Aeron team. So um, I do agree. Maybe actually if I had her Supreme Plus, I probably could clear floor 80 right now. Yeah. So anyways, so this would be what I would recommend for the Wilder wish list. And then finally, we have the Graveborn wish list. So, I would recommend actually going with Thorin and Carolina. Um, Cecia is very good, don't get me wrong. But the reason is because Carolina in the late game, he she is instrumental in the Aeron team. Like, all Aeron teams will splash a Carolina because her damage goes through the roof. Once you unlock her hero focus, when you, which increases her crit. Once you unlock her uh, EX weapon, which, let me just confirm here. Yeah, it shreds magic defense, further boosting her damage output. And I have the EX weapon, like the, the higher you go, I have her EX weapon at level 10 right now, which increases her magic defense shred by 25%. When you combine her with Aeron's 55% magic defense shred, you end up getting a total of um, 55 plus 30, 85% magic defense shred. 90% if you get her EX weapon to level 15. So she gets kind of nuts. And she freezes for six seconds, mind you. And does splash damage to everyone when she ults. So, and Thorin, of course, the Giga Chad tank in the game everybody wants him and those who don't have him are you know it, it's just a much different experience pushing through end game content without him because he's able to leech the enemy's hp with his ultimate he's able to counter attack absorbed hp uh, absorb damage so he can be a damage he's a damage dealing tank that leeches the enemy's hp when you get him mythic plus 
get his EX weapon, he is able to create sign a pact with the ally one tile behind him. You'll see a green a green chain connecting the two and what happens is that whenever the unit he signs a pact with takes damage Thorin will absorb 50% of that. When Thorin dies he will revive because the ally will sacrifice 85% of his HP to bring Thorin back to life. Uh, yes yeah. so there's just some amazing synergies it's, it's really nice to have a tank that protects a very squishy unit like that. Can I ask you about today's boss? Absolutely, absolutely. Almost done here. Uh, yes. Um, all right, so that's Thorin. And then Sessi, of course, is the goat when it comes to damage dealing. So you definitely want to um, bring her out because, or bring her to Mythic Plus and higher because when she ults, she summons an ally called Mr. Carlisle. He's kind of like the the beast to her beauty, right? And Mr. Carlisle inherits all of her stats and also deals damage. Whenever Cecilia deals damage to, let me see here. Oh yeah, and she's able to also entangle the enemy, which makes, them, makes it tough for them to move or act uh, and increases her attack speed. Yeah, and she gains defense. She she does it all, and she's very, very useful for, for uh, content progression. And then Igor is kind of like the X factor, being able to disrupt enemy formations by jumping around all over the place. For the more gravestones he summons, like every time you take an enemy down to fifty percent HP, another uh, tombstone pops up. And he has, and he's able to for, whenever he takes a fatal blow, he uses the tombstone to block that fatal blow, and he jumps to another tombstone. So he has to be killed a couple times before he's actually gone from, from the map. So very useful. Now for the Graveborn A ranks, I would say probably, the best choices would be Viperion, and Sylvina. If I was to go back in time, I would actually do this formation, uh, because. With this formation, so Viperion, he's very good for Dream Realm because his kit scales very well off of the enemy's HP. Plus, he has some sustainability with his leech rate. Um, Sylvina is excellent uh, because she is able to hyper focus on the back units and with incredible with um, a lot of investment she is really able to effectively take out someone in the back row like a mage and this can make it, this can relieve the pressure off of your party uh yeah and you'll survive and um you know be able to clear faster so or more easily so and then if once you have those then you can go niru she's he's kind of like a um yeah, he's all about draining life. Um, I mean, I don't know anyone who uses him. People say good things about him, but don't use him. But Niru is another character who you can add to your wish list after you get them, these two max. So um, this would be the wish list I would recommend. If you have any questions, you can comment in the comment section below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.